Plateau, uh, just beautiful. When you think of country and mm -hmm. life slowing down, this is it. It is. <laughs> Very well, historic little town of Rugby, Tennessee. Yeah. And we're going to take and show it to you. But first of all, we camped last night here at a yes. campground at the R.M. Brooks General Merchandise Store. And we're going to go in there and show the folks around. Mm -hmm. Really old store, so much history. We'll tell you all about it as we go. And um, had a good night camping, didn't we? We did. We didn't get here until after dark, so yeah, had to set up in the dark, right? Yeah. So we're <laughs> going to go grab some breakfast, and um, we'll see you all inside. Very crowded here on Saturday morning, isn't it? It is. Look, estimated early 1920. Yeah. That's pretty cool right there, isn't it? It is. <laughs> the store. Nice. Antiques. Tourist info. What's this over there? Night crawlers and spring lizards sold here. I love <laughs> it, don't you? Yeah. Look at the little Christmas uh, mailbox there. Yes, come in. We're open. And it used to serve as a post office. How my pass. Yep. Oh, that sounds great, doesn't it? Look at that bike rental sign. Mm-hmm. Got a couple of bikes there, it looks like it can Sounds loud in there. <laughs> must be having a party. Well let's head on in. Got a guest book here. You can sign. Yeah, Reverend yeah. Rudolph going. Hey, bye guys. See ya. Thanks, baby. New post office. Some literature. Mm-hmm. That's um, interesting. I think a lot of the stuff, especially up here on the top shelf, is um, from the great grandparents who actually started the store. You can see it's some old stuff up there. And here's a post office. Still kind of in the way that it was um, in the days of usage. The old mail bags down there. Nice. The flag. Cooper Brooks, We've got some old bottles and all kinds of stuff up here on the top shelf. Yardsticks. Oh, that's pretty neat. See the posters. Books and you see these old two desks here, isn't that neat? Yes. Did you get those posters? I did. Pepsi and Coke. And the pot belly stove over there. I think it's always been here. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Breakfast on Saturday. Yes. There's a. Uh, Biscuit and gravy. Mm -hmm. 
Look at the old Charlie's chips and Norris chips and wow. Old cash register. Morgan County News. What can I do for Go you? Ahead. Uh, I want to get an omelet um, with cheese and bacon. Do you want American Swiss pepper jack or hoop cheese? This Just like Colby skin. Um, what is hoop cheese? It's like a mild Colby. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just our wheel cheese. It's really good. Really um, I'll try some of that. All right. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Do you want any veggies in there? No. Yes. Okay, well, so we got here too late, didn't we? Yes. But, I gravy. <laughs> but we have a, yeah, we do have an excuse. Yes. They didn't start serving breakfast until 8.30, and my, we've been looking at my phone. And so we live in Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, and my phone just now says 8.56. Which would be Central Standard Time. Right. But Mike's phone is still on the Eastern, and apparently they're on Eastern we can't figure out why my iPhone switched to Santa. And we were looking at her phone all morning. We're <laughs> late for breakfast, but we did get something ordered. Some eggs and mm -hmm. get an omelet and sausage and some toast and mm -hmm. got some um, good coffee here. So we'll get to try some breakfast, just not gravy. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm, that's good. Is it? Yep. I got orange juice out of the cooler. Yep. So we'll show you guys um, our breakfast in a little bit. and. Then on around the storm, we hope to meet the owner, Miss Tiffany, don't we? Yes, and talk to her. So we're just sitting here waiting on breakfast, looking at all this stuff. Let me show you. It's Gray Gables. It's a bed and breakfast here. Mm -hmm. But look at all the signage. The old Pepsi Cola sign up there. Bread. There's hats, Kim. Did you see those hats? I saw those hats. You know I can spy them anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the food is here. Yes. Yeah, it looks really good. It's a country. Breakfast and toast and eggs and that sausage looks fresh, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. and bacon and hoop cheese, they said it's... Hoop cheese. It's supposed uh -huh. to be really popular. It's supposed to be similar to Kobe, but milder than Kobe Jack. Yeah. Hey guys, we did meet somebody here of all places that watches our channel um, from Kentucky. It took them an hour to get here, they said. Yep. So anyway, they came over to Look say... Look big piece of sausage. That thing's huge. Look, well, sausage is good. Yeah, sure. Good. So we're here with uh, Miss Karen and Tiffany, right? Yes. Was it Terry? Tiffany Terry? Uh -huh. It is. All right. Mm -hmm. So you want to tell us a little bit about your um, store here? Yeah, and we know it was your great-grandparents originally, was. so mm -hmm. do you want to start there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my great-grandfather, R.M., built it in the early 20s. We don't actually have documentation uh, of it, but he built it for the state workers. Mm -hmm. uh, they were building uh, the state highway, and he thought it would be a good business move. So the front part of the store that you see is what he built, and he just made it as a temporary. It's built on stumps, and uh, business was so good that he got out of business. The way I understand it, he was in business with his brother. There were seven brothers and five sisters, and so he was kind of <laughs> big family. Co-partners with um, one of his brothers, and then this became the permanent fixture. And years later, um, my grandmother and grandfather, his son, their son, moved back from Oak Ridge, and my grandmother became the postmistress. So yeah, we saw then, her picture, Berta. Yes, ma'am. Berta. Yes, and uh, so it just grew from there. So it's always been in my family, and it's always been open with the exception of when my dad passed away in 2010. Okay. So it was closed for a short period of time from January of 2010 till April of 2014. And when did you all actually, you and your husband, was that, that bought it or just came through the family and you, now you ran Kind of. Kind yeah, of a okay. combination of both. My uncle and my mom um, co-owned it together. And okay. so... Um, Anyway, so we acquired it and about a year and a half before April of 2014. And uh, 
I said I purchased it and then didn't, didn't know what God wanted me to do with it. So it took me about a year and a half. Yeah. My teenage children, um, my now son-in-law, Austin, and my daughter, and then, of course, uh, they they were inspirational in helping because it was... Uh, it was quite a big task to take on. So I'm the sure. room you see now was built on a couple of years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. My husband had a dream uh, that he was supposed to build on and didn't follow that dream for several years. But I got really <laughs> busy where in the wintertime I have hunters from the local um, sawbriar mm -hmm. and they hunt pheasant and quail. And so uh, they were coming in and then other local people or other people were here. And so like, it would be nothing for you to have to like sit with a hunter, which was a good thing because people get to know each other, but um, there was beginning to not be space. So for people we, to sit down For people to sit down and eat. And yeah. so we built this on. Um, so yeah, so. Well, so you grew up here in rugby? Or? Pretty much. So okay. my mom was born and raised here in rugby. Mm -hmm. And my dad was born and raised 12 miles from here in Sunday. Mm -hmm. And they were high school sweethearts, and they got married and went to UT. And when my dad graduated, um, that the, his job at the time moved him to St. Louis, Missouri. So I have two. I have two sisters and one brother. My older brother and sister were born here in Tennessee, and my younger sister and I were born in St. Louis, Missouri. And then um, my grandmother was running the store, and my grandfather got sick, mm -hmm. and they had already been thinking about moving back here to help. And so. Um, when I was about twelve, my uh, we moved back, and so okay. so yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. well, interesting. So I uh, did not like the move, mm. and uh, I said, "When I turn eighteen, I'm leaving." And I go to the city, <laughs> and I'm kind of like, ah. <laughs> so anyway, it's kind of a com comical story. So no, I never moved back to St. Louis, and I do love it here. I mean, it grows on you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I tell everybody, so here at the store, you're in rugby. Rugby's bridge right. to bridge. Okay. And then I always say, I'm the countryside, and a mile down the road, you can have the Victorian side. Yeah, I see. So. Victorian side. And every tell Victorian us side. about that, about the Brit a British person came here and wanted to colonize it. Yeah, so Thomas Hughes um, came here. Um, he was the second sons. So when you look at the history, uh, the second sons in England did not get anything. So he came here to create a utopia. And um, then they were successful in some ways, but then there was some different things, typhoid fever, um, some different things that hit, and some of them went back and some of them, of course, uh, passed on. There was some fires. It's really got some great history. And then, I might not be telling this correctly, but it was in the 1960s, I believe, that um, Brian Stagg uh, just took a real interest to rugby and just the history of it. And so he came back and began to kind of um, reopen it, so to speak, hmm. if that's, I don't know if that's really the word. Mm -hmm. um, and so then his, his sister, Barbara, um, took over when Brian had passed away. And so you, there's a lot of people that come here that have second homes and they just fall in love with the idea of this small little community wow. and, um, and just take a passion and do a yeah. lot of things. And it's really, um, it's had its hard times because um, it is a nonprofit, um, so donations are always welcome. And you know, it's and we live in this rural area, so mm. um, it is hard sometimes too. But there's some great people that come up with a lot, a lot of great ideas, and mm -hmm. uh, we've got a super board that works really hard. Well, Tiffany, what's some of the most interesting things about your store? You think? Um, so. Of course, it was built in the 1920s, the early 1920s, and still being here and functioning. Um, some things that people don't know is when you first walk in the door, there's like this little hump. And uh, <laughs> it was built on stumps. So my great-grandfather, they just cut it down and then threw it up. Um, um, so that's interesting that it's, that is you know. So a lot of people, and I do get to talk about this some, but this store um, was very significant during the Great Depression. Uh, there's a little uh, poem uh, that my grandmother wrote. So the, the mail guy would come by and he'd honk his horn and that would tell her she had 10 minutes to get the mail ready. And my grandfather was um, serving and she wrote him a really fast letter and it's uh, kind of funny. Is uh, it is it up there? It's over in there? the front of the post office. I saw it. Yeah. yeah. And um, if you take time to read it, so she talks about people coming in mm -hmm. and they don't have lard and different things, and she <laughs> kind of has this, you know, rhyme. So 
it's kind of the melting pot of everybody in the community, you know, um, so yeah. to speak. And so that's really kind of unique. Um, I remember uh, I had uh, there was a story. So when we when we acquired the store, um, there was a debate about selling alcohol. And um, so the little church of God is down the road. And um, I said, I don't, I don't think so. And I remember this story, and I don't know if it's exactly accurate or not, but um, my great grandfather decided to sell alcohol one time. And uh, not that alcohol necessarily is bad, but he decided to sell it one time. And there was somebody who came in the store drunk, and it was a big array of mess. Aww. And um, <laughs> anyway, apparently he got knocked out or something, and my or something happened. And my great grandfather's grandmother said, "No more alcohol in the store." Right. So for me, I kind of stood on that. I thought, you know, the reason I do what I do is is because I'm a believer in Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And so. Um, I, I, was felt gonna, like, I was going to say your faith is probably one of the most important things about is. your business here. It is. Um, and so uh, so I said, well, I don't think we'll have to do you know stuff like that in order to survive. Because if they did all that year, those years, then, you know, right. we would be fine. And so, um, so that was kind of funny. So there was like three weeks or something, two weeks or three weeks that my great-grandfather did that. Um, didn't last long. <laughs> did not last long. My faith is a, a big this is the reason I do what I do uh, I don't think any I tell the story sometimes so when I knew that God was in um, us doing the store but I didn't really know what that would look like so then after we acquired it I kind of was like oops I don't know what I'm doing I didn't know if it was supposed to look the way it's always looked or you know I just didn't know change it up a I change bit. it up yeah. and so um, I tell the story that I would be in the backyard mowing the grass and I would be crying I think I know you get I know I'm supposed to do this but I don't know what it's supposed to look like mm -hmm. and so um, so that was my heartbeat when I had my pastor come and his wife and there was some other people that came that we prayed over the store so uh, I'll say the bologna sandwich is just a draw and hopefully yeah. people will come and feel the presence of God and, That's awesome. and feel peace and so so God and fried pies and bologna sandwiches that's what it's all about that's your, that's that's your what next it's all about that's your next t-shirt right <laughs> that's there my, that should be my next t-shirt yeah. it's all about Jesus fried pies and bologna sandwiches do you have any fried pies I think so so I made fried pies and I had a little stash, and then I introduced the stash to somebody yesterday, and then the stash got really low, <laughs> and so I made some other stuff. So hopefully I'll have a fried uh, pie. That's a funny story I'll tell you. So um, in the midst of all this, there was a house that was attached to the store, mm -hmm. and we it was it was uh, farther gone than what we wanted to invest. So I made the decision to to tear the house down and it was a house that my mom was raised in my mom and my uncle so it was very difficult for my mm -hmm. mom um but i felt like we were the next generation and i need so uh, there's a porch out there and i have bands come and play and people can sit out there during oh, the summer nice. so it's cool so it puts a little twist so anyway in the midst of me tearing this house down we had um uh, you can rent these big dumpsters and but you have a limited amount of time and i had a cruising we do cruisings twice a year for antique cars and uh, so we had this big dumpster and we were trying to get this house tore down and and everything you know salvage what we were going to keep and and we were fixing to have this cruise in and so my uncle who is now almost 80 my mom is 84 she'll be 85 in February um, he said you need to carry sorghum local sorghum from Muddy Pond and I said okay and so he came in and he said uh, um, I said, okay, get me a case of glass and a case of plastic. He said, oh, no, 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 you need two of each. I said, well, that's all my pocketbook can handle is one of each. He said, okay, fine, I'll just buy them, I'll buy them. And so he <laughs> leaves and he goes and gets his sorghum and he brings it back and he has these apple pies. And he throws these apple pies at my son and I. And I don't like apple pies, I like others. And so Wesley tried it and, and he said, what do you think? This is my uncle said, what do you think? What do you think? And I said, Wesley said they're good. And he said, do you think we can sell them this weekend? Now this was three days before this cruise in. I still had a mess and I was going crazy in my head. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I can't take one more thing. And so he said, what do you think? Do you think we can sell them? And I said, I guess Uncle Bobby. I mean, he said, well good, because I've already ordered 50 of them. <laughs> and so 50 fried pies, he went to the Amish lady and 45 minutes I sold out of these pies. So
So for months, wow. I would drive back and forth to buy 40 minutes one way to buy 15 fried pies because I really didn't know from, my, the, Amish. from the Amish lady. And um, what not, a great story! Yeah, yeah. and I, I didn't know for sure if they would sell, so that's why I would buy that little. And so that went on for months that I would do that, and because I was building my business and it was just me. Yeah. And my mom one day said, "I don't want to try to get in what you're doing," she said, <laughs> "but I have your great grandmother's the Church of God ladies recipe, and I will share it with you for, for, for mm. fried pies." And I said, okay, great. So for a long time, she did my fried pies at her house and helped me. And um, so I quit going to the Amish lady and started doing our own fried pies. And I tell the story that one day uh, my mom had had knee replacement. And anyway, to sum the story up, she kicked me out of the nest. I went over there. She had made the dough, and I was going to go over that night. And she said, Tiffany, she said, not that I don't want you to do your fried pies here at my house. She said, but I really feel like it would be better if you would do the fried pies at the store because on it would be on yeah, yeah on site. <laughs> and I said, the mama bird kicked the baby bird out of the nest. No. Yeah. So anyway, but that's how I that's how fried pies came about. Yeah. And everything that I do on my menu kind of has a little story. Mm -hmm. I was telling some people yesterday, I didn't just all of a sudden come up with that menu. Like it's grown as I've mastered one thing, and each thing kind of has like. A little story behind it or a reason behind it. So mm -hmm. it's different. The menu is different than it was than it's been down through the years. Mm -hmm. I went through when I started doing this I had local oil well guys and um, hamburgers was going to be something I thought I'd do. So I would try frozen hamburgers and padded out hamburgers and cheap hamburger meat and more expensive you know and finally I buy a ground chuck and we hand pad our bad but I went through three George Foreman grills and flat grills <laughs> mm -hmm. before I finally bought the grill I have and because um, I just wore them out. Um, Ribeyes is another thing. My uncle went to the local uh, little uh, Burnett's grocery store, bought a pack of ribeyes, had the butcher, you know, mm -hmm. and he brings this in one day and he says, and he didn't say anything. And I said, what? <laughs> you know what? And he says, I think you should try those. He said, they'd be great, ribeyes. And, it, and in my mind, I was thinking, I'm not really sure, Uncle Bobby, this will go over well. Mm. Um, but for a long time, he would go, and so I tried them. And for a long time, he'd go to the butcher and have 15 or 20 ribeyes cut for me and bring him until one day he said I think you can start going and getting your own ribeyes so that's how the ribeyes yeah. came about um, now I know you have um, a lot of property in here you, you got stuff for sale and then I'm assuming stuff that's been in your family for generations it has and some things I've, we've acquired um, so it's really hard I try to uh, everything that's up high is not for sale so anything on my shelves up here is not. So top shelf is off top limits. Top shelf is off limits unless um, every now and then um, there's those times when somebody asks me. I had somebody one time wanted um, an Elk Valley, and I tell this story a lot, an Elk Valley medicine. And I have a little section over here that has medicine bottles. And I said, ah, it's not for sale. And they were like, and the more I got to talking to them, they lived in Elk Valley. Oh. And they wanted the jar to put in their bathroom. And so I got to talking to them, and I said, you know what? I said, if I can find a jar or a bottle that's like that and let people see it, because that jar has no significance to me. I didn't know if my mm -hmm. grandmother, you know, got medicine out of it. Yeah. But it was, I wanted people to be able to see it. So I said, if I have another one, I'll sell you that one. And so I went in my back room, and I found another jar that was similar to yeah. it, and I sold it to them. And I'll be honest with you, I couldn't take you to the bottle that I put mm -hmm. up there to replace it. So, uh -huh. But they still come in here, and they have the bottle, and it's in their bathroom. And to me, that was meant more than any amount of money that I could yeah. have made off the bottle. And somebody, right. somebody one time said, well, I think that bottle was like worth $400. And for a minute, I thought, ooh, I think I sold it for like $15. And then I thought, you know it's fifteen dollars no big deal they're yeah. enjoying it and that's what's important right. so. Yeah. so we camped here last night at your campground and would you want to tell everybody how they can get in touch with you um, on online for to either camp or to come visit RM Brooks yes so um, the campground has 10 sites all together I have three 15 inch sites and seven 30 inch sites and they're full hookups um, I am growing where eventually hopefully it'll be uh, online and maybe there'll be a map uh, but it's it's so small that I don't know if I need a map 
Um, but you can reach me um, on the store number at 423-628-2533. Um, if I'm not here, Katie will take your name and number, and then I will call you back. And the address here is 2830 Rugby Parkway, Rugby, Tennessee, 37733. And we'll put all this in the description. Yeah, so it's uh, www.rmbrooks.com. Okay. And yeah. I have a Facebook page. Now, are you all closed any days during the week? So I am, and I was telling, I was talking about that. I, I was open for a long time for six days a week. And, um, Just but closed on Sundays? And only closed on Sundays. Okay. And, um, but now I'm closed on Wednesdays and Sundays. Oh, and I saw on the menu, breakfast is only on Saturdays. It is. And then the, the, every other day that you're open, it's lunch and dinner. Yeah, I'm or open lunch, or lunch. just lunch. Yeah. So I'm open uh, from 10 to 5 Eastern Time, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And then on Saturdays, we open at 8.30 for breakfast. So anyway, I tell a little funny story. Maybe one day, I was telling somebody yesterday, <laughs> I, uh, I started to open through the week for breakfast. I had two young ladies here, and I wanted to create so I could keep them working. And they had, you know, one is having a baby, and the other one moved. Anyway, so it didn't work out. But the story about breakfast, the reason I do breakfast, is some local guys, um, older gentlemen, said one day, said, um, why don't you get up and fix us biscuits and gravy? <laughs> and I said, hmm, there's a problem with that. I said, um, first of all, I don't like mornings. And second of all, I said, I don't even cook my own husband breakfast. What makes you think I'm going to cook you breakfast? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I had two sweet little ladies in here, and they were like, we'll cook breakfast, we'll cook breakfast. And so I was like, like a deer in headlights, and I thought, so I said, okay, well, we'll talk about it. And so I go for walks, and I'll talk to God when I go for And I said, Lord... If you want me to do breakfast, I will. <laughs> but and at the time, there was a lady named Lois, and her husband had passed away, and um, she, it was it was good for her and good for me. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I started doing breakfast on Saturday mornings. Is, and she uh, helped you, and she Lois helped me. Helped you. And there's other funny stories I could tell about her biscuits, and she would laugh, and if I told them. But anyway, so that's why I do. But I do like Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like my mornings at home, mm -hmm. and so not yet on breakfast in the morning. It's just too much. I think for me it would be too much. Yeah. Uh, so Saturdays. So Saturdays. Yeah, and then yeah. I try to do it until I run out, and sometimes I will make more, and sometimes I don't. So you kind of got to get here mm -hmm. before 9.30 usually. Well, we got, we got stuck on Central Standard Time, so... Yeah. Well, one of our phones did. <laughs> <laughs> Your phone misled us, yes. Karen. Well, th Tiffany, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate y'all. And yeah. um, I was going to tell you, in his, there's great places to visit. I always tell everybody. So if you come to rugby and you stay in rugby, there's a variety of places you can stay. You stay in the campground. I have a primitive tree house. But you also have Gray Gables Bed and Breakfast, yeah. which is a full bed and breakfast. Um, there's different places in the village. Um Anacara, Perigo House, the um, Percy Cottage, Newbury House are all antique homes that are in the village. So you kind of, and they all have their uniqueness. Mm -hmm. um, so, but if you come to Rugby, I always tell everybody within 45 minutes, there's tons of stuff to do. Uh -huh. I mean, there really is. Yeah. We've got Highland Manor Winery, we've got Sergeant York's Home Place, um, we've got Frozen Head State Park, Pickett State Park, um, the Brushy Mountain Prison, there's a Scott County Museum Jail in uh, Huntsville. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of things to do that you could spend two or three days yeah. with a little drive. But if you're kind of don't mind driving and like to see mm -hmm. the scenery, then it's a great, it's a great area. To see. And um, he, um, sh they lived in the campground. And now she's like, can I, I'll come watch Jesus and then like, I'll come so help, help you. Yeah. So sweet, yeah. yeah. We we love it. We and stayed. Katie, Katie, like, we stayed here for <laughs> God three months, four yeah. months. Yeah.
Tiffany, thanks so much. You are, well, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, guys, we sure hope you enjoyed uh, this as much as we did. This, yes. this was a real blessing. Here at the R.M. Brooks General Merchandise, old post office, so yes. much history. Established in the early 1920s. Tiffany, thank you for taking time to yes. uh, give us all that information, share those stories. That's what makes it come alive. Uh -huh. and if you love the back roads of East Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And just the countryside. And mm -hmm. This is just a beautiful rural area. Yeah. And it's so neat to visit someplace different and quaint to where all the locals visit. Plus, she has tourists coming here. And by the way, the food was delicious. It was delicious. So we uh, really enjoyed that. So we had stayed overnight camping, we had a great time, yes. got up this morning. Uh, we were going on Central Time instead of Eastern Time. <laughs> we showed up late for breakfast. Which Tiffany did say in my defense, my phone defense, <laughs> that the county line is right up here and it's Central and then you yeah. cross it and it becomes Eastern again. Yeah. So my phone, you That's know. Good. So you should come to Rugby, Tennessee and visit the store. Tell yes. Tiffany, Friday's Forever sent you. Absolutely. So, look at here who we got with us on this trip. Oh, big boy. Yeah, he slept in the van yeah. while we ate breakfast and talked to Tiffany. <laughs> so until next time, everybody, we're Fridays. Forever. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.